Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Justin Mitchell from La Crosse, Wisconsin, and I'm here with Dr. Lee Pace. And we're going to talk about our early experience utilizing the Arthrex Fiber Stitch Meniscal Repair System. Lee and I were both early adopters of this system and have found great success and safety with using these products. And we're going to go through a few cases and kind of have a discussion about the things that we've learned while using this system. So early on, the 12 degree fiber stitch was released, and we found that to be a, a workhorse product for us to repair meniscal tears and Lee, if you wouldn't mind, just kind of talk about your early experience using that 12 degree system and some of the tears that you see that you've been able to utilize that implant for. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Justin. Excited to be here today to discuss some of this stuff because it's definitely been a, a really the hands down the best sort of all inside device that I've, I've had an opportunity to use so far. So, um, you know, I find a lot of utility using the fiber stitch for different types of meniscus tears. And I want to start off and show you sort of what has been my workhorse. And so right here, this sort of undersurface tear of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus has really been a workhorse tear pattern for me um, with regards to using the fiber stitch. It's one of those that um, you almost have to pull on it before you can even see the tear, very far peripheral, red, red zone. Um, this is a perfect indication for an all inside device. And um, what I wanna do real quick is show you sort of this um, repair technique that I've had a lot of success with using the fiber stitch repair device. You can see here, um, the, this triangle represents the meniscus and the, the fiber stitch is gonna be placed like this with one limb that pierces the superior surface of the meniscus here, but then it proceeds diagonally to exit underneath the meniscus. And then it sort of skirts along, just along the tibial plateau and then penetrates the capsule here. And then uh, you deploy the anchor and then you'll place the second anchor up here. And what this does is this gives a nice broad spacing of the anchors and allows excellent compression of this tear. Uh, you know, sometimes it's a little tricky, although it still works, to come underneath and actually pierce through here. So this is a really nice technique. And this has been a workhorse technique for me, but I feel like I have to sort of show it to you first um, uh, to help it make more sense as we actually show some of the video here. So here's an example here. This is, uh, I have a nanoscope camera here, so hence the, the square that you can see on the screen. Uh, but this is that exact tear pattern. And what the video is going to start off with, I'm going to actually have the, the needle of the fiber stitch underneath the meniscus first. I'm kind of sizing it up and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to uh, then proceed to place the anchors uh, and repair the meniscus. So there I am kind of sizing up the tear right there. And I'm going to poke through from top to bottom. And now you can see that I'm actually through the meniscus uh, and on the undersurface, deploy the first anchor. And I'm gonna check and I can see that my sutures are how they need to be. And now I'm gonna deploy the second anchor and then I'm gonna tension my knot just like that. You can see I've already placed two previous anchors there and was able to get a really robust, you know, 360 compression, lock out the synovial fluid for this uh, really common undersurface tear of the medial meniscus. And then here's another example here. This is one that was a little, it's a little bit more, this is a full thickness tear, same location, but all the way up to the superior surface, posterior horn medial meniscus tear. I able, was able to fix this using the same sort of technique with the standard 12 degree curve. And obviously I, it should be pointed out that anytime you're having problems with access, you should fenestrate the MCL. Although I do think that the 12, the, excuse me, the 24 degree curve may actually uh, help with this a little bit. Uh, but anyway, here, here it is. These are some still photos showing the progression of these anchors. You can see that how we've placed those in that similar fashion so I can get uh, above and below fixation uh, with a single anchor. And we'll proceed through like this. Again, you can see the sutures coming underneath the meniscus right there. And we placed a total of four anchors here. And you can see that was excellent fixation. Uh, uh, this patient is now uh, uh, quite a bit out from surgery and has done quite well with this. So we have no reason to suspect this didn't heal. Okay, and then here's one that's a little bit more unstable, a little bit more complex, but similar posterior horn meal meniscus tear. Um, uh, this sort of had a little bit of some degenerative components in the in, in the middle of it and um, was a little bit more unstable on probing. So I really did want to get um, vertical mattress stitches uh, independently above and below the meniscus on this one. So um, you can see we're placing a superior surface stitch here and that pucker, that flip up of the meniscus was purposeful so that I could spear the undersurface without skiving. And then I could um, uh, get that, uh, that, that fixation point below the meniscus or on the inferior surface and then, and then pull it back down. 
So you can see uh, me doing that here, and then you can see the finished product. I was actually able to really stabilize this quite nicely using the 12 degree curved fiber stitch. Um, uh, and you can see I've used it in various uh, uh, fashion now for you know different degrees of this, uh, this almost like spectrum of this medial meniscus sort of red red zone tear. So anyway, um, that's the that's the standard one that we've had a lot of success with. But but Justin, I know you have some good examples of some of the other curvatures that are available for fiber stitch. Yeah, I think it, that's really interesting. I've definitely stolen that technique from you and utilized that for a lot of the tears that I've seen. That 360 compression is really nice. But I think your cases are really excellent to show the versatility of even that 12 degree curve where you could get on top, on the bottom, get underneath and get the compression that you needed to get that anatomic meniscus repair. I've also had success utilizing the 12 degree curve. And here I'm gonna show you a case where I start to do sort of a hybrid repair. So this is a 54 year old marathon runner, had mechanical symptoms and actually had a red red zone tear with an unstable meniscus on probing. So in this case, I actually chose to use a standard 12 degree curve on the superior surface, like in one of the cases you just showed, and then actually use a reverse curve on the bottom. So we're gonna see this meniscal repair starting up top with a standard vertical mattress repair suture technique. Um, and actually that does kind of evert the meniscus, just like you talked about. And to compress that and restore that anatomic position back to the tibial plateau, I chose to use reverse curve in this particular instance. And you can actually see that curve skives nicely right against the meniscus so that it actually actually captures the meniscal leaflet and you can do that standard vertical mattress under surface repair utilizing that alternative curve. And in this particular instance, you're gonna see we put in uh, two different repair sutures and that very nicely compresses that meniscus back against the tibial plateau and gets you top and bottom fixation so that we can get an anatomic repair here. Yeah, so I really like that, uh, that technique right there um, of putting the superior stitch first to sort of flip the meniscus up and then you can use the opposite curve device to really optimize your ability to penetrate the meniscus there, get those two stitches, and then that helps reposition it in the more anatomic positions. That's a really nice technique. Yeah, thanks. And I think that's one of the nice parts about the fiber stitch is we get that versatility of being able to use these multiple curves. And you can see that probe on the end where we're getting that meniscus to lay nice and flat. Now, not only have I used it for that particular tear pattern, here's another example where we've got a more true meniscal capsular tear uh, in the back of the meniscus. And I use the exact same thing, 12 degrees on top and then a reverse curve on the bottom. And you can see that really nicely anatomically positions the meniscus. And you'll see as we kind of probe and move around the meniscus here, we've got an anatomic repair, very nice seal, and the meniscus is laid against the plateau. So this is a very nice uh, technique that I've been able to use recently as with the, with the advent of the reverse curve uh, meniscal device. Yeah, I would agree. That looks fantastic. So not only are we using these types of uh, meniscal devices for simple or standard tears, I've also expanded the armamentarium here to utilize them for some more interesting types of tears and specifically horizontal cleavage tears. So in a lot of these horizontal cleavage tears, we used to resect a leaflet or do a partial repair. And I know Lee, you've got a great technique to do some of that as well. Um, one of the techniques that I have started to use is utilizing um, the standard 12 degree curve and at times even the reverse curve to get down to the meniscus and create circumferential suture compression around the meniscus in a similar technique to kind of what you described before. So I've got several cases demonstrating that here with this circumferential suture technique to create a, a 360 repair of that horizontal cleavage tear of the meniscus. And at times when we get into these tighter knees where even an MCL release doesn't quite give us the visualization that we need, I've started to be able to use that 24 degree curve to actually turn that curvature up and follow along the condyle so you can get above and below the meniscus to actually create a repair, just like you had alluded to before. And I know you've had a lot of experience utilizing that 24 degree curve. Um, wondering if you'd be able to comment on some of those cases that you've been able to use that for as well. So yeah, so I'd be happy to comment. I have a, an example right here. And sort of to your point about hybrid uh, fixation techniques or repair techniques, um, uh, this is a perfect example. This, um, this case that I have here is of a uh, posterior horn lateral meniscus, uh, which underwent an index repair several months prior with an all inside meniscal based repair technique. Um, and I had to come back uh, actually to do a delayed ACL reconstruction and I was probing the meniscus and I found that there was an unhealed undersurface portion of the tear uh, near the body, just anterior to the popliteus. And this is a more fixed area of the meniscus for me. So this is something I like to use a capsular based device on. But there wasn't a lot of um, 
room in the meniscus for me to get that that technique that I like. So I want to take advantage of that increased curve from the 24 degree so that I could get that diagonal approach from top to bottom uh, on the meniscus so I could still get that divergent, uh, uh, those divergent anchor points and compress that meniscus tear. So, so we'll kind of walk through that quickly here. So here I am probing. You can see that the repair had taken, except for there was a one little spot down there where it looks like I had actually not got the suture in the right spot and it hadn't quite allowed that portion of the tear to heal. So you can see I can get my probe in there and I can pull on that a little bit. So I want to get that fixed. So here I come in with that 24 degree curve and you can see, you can appreciate that increased curvature there. Again, a top to bottom approach right there. And then here I am uh, uh, putting the superior anchor in and you can sort of see the anchor deploy there, which is always kind of fun. Um, and then from there, um, I'll tension it and I was able to really close that gap down there um, on an area of the meniscus that I didn't have a ton of real estate um, as far as width to work with and I was able to, to close that down successfully. So that's been a nice uh, a nice indication for these um, higher degree 24 uh, degree curved fiber stitch uh, repair devices. Yeah and you can really actually see how you were able to kind of avoid the popliteus there using that curve and kind of maneuver that that meniscal uh, device in the position that you wanted to get it into, not only get the repair, but also avoid entrapping the popliteus. So that, that's a really nice repair there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so here's a recent case of mine, a uh, 27 year old CrossFit enthusiast with a history of clicking and popping in the knee, lateral joint line pain, and an MRI demonstrating a lateral meniscus tear. So when we get in there, it's a, a tear that is really adjacent to the popliteus. And so that's a difficult repair pattern like we just talked about. It's hard to get enough real estate to get the repair that you want. And so I elected to use a combination here. So what we can see in this particular pattern, and you'll see during the probing, is that the popliteus is right adjacent to that tear. So what I did here is I actually came in from the ipsilateral portal. And now this is important, and this is a nice benefit of the fiber stitches, you can actually set your depth. So you can look at your preoperative MRI and make sure that you're not piercing too deep and set the, the depth gauge so that you're not piercing into anything dangerous. So I'm able to come from the ipsilateral portal. And in this case, I used a straight device. So I'm going straight into the meniscus while protecting the posterior structures and also going straight and avoiding that popliteus tendon. So that gets us a very nice vertical mattress configuration tear on the superior aspect, but again, elevating things allowed to put a 24 degree implant on the bottom to really get that compression down so we're able to get that meniscus back to the tibial plateau and get an anatomic repair here. Yeah, that's really nice how you were able to manipulate the position of the meniscus to uh, optimize your ability to place these devices. Yeah, I think that's that's one of the really nice things and we're starting to see that here is that we can actually get the same excellent repair constructs utilizing different degrees of fixation. We showed that you were able to use the 12 degree very nicely and then this is a very similar tear in a different location where we had to adjust things and kind of use a straight and a 24. So it's a very versatile set of implants. So speaking of difficult tear patterns or utilizing different angles, um, I know that both of us have encountered these not quite standard meniscal tears or these more complex tear patterns, especially in these younger patients where we really do need to try to get a, a reasonable repair for these patients uh, to save their meniscus and preserve their joint. I know that both of us have encountered those It'd be interesting to show an example of a case where you had to use either a combination of repairs or do something different to kind of get these uh, these meniscus tears to heal. Um, any, any cases like that that you'd like to discuss? Yeah, so I do have an example of this. So. Um, I have, again, a, a posterior hormeal meniscus tear, but this is a tear more in the red-white zone. Again, vertical full thickness tear. Um, once these meniscus tears start creeping into uh, the red-white zone, closer to the free margin of the meniscus, I tend to prefer uh, all meniscal-based repair technique. I think it gives me a little bit more control in getting the suture through that, that inner free margin of the meniscus where it's a little bit thinner. But as I went along, I found that I didn't quite have a complete repair and needed to supplement with the fiber stitch. So I'll just kind of walk through this video real quick. You can see here, uh, placing the repair stitches with the Scorpion. Again, that inner free margin, getting that nicely, getting some knots tied, you can see, but there's some instability, the meniscal capsular junction right there, that um, the Scorpion's not gonna be able to treat. So I can place a fiber stitch right there to supplement that. And now I've restored, uh, the, um, the original or the native stability of the medial meniscus there. And I've been able to complete this repair, this little bit more com uh, complex tear 
using two different repair devices, uh, but also highlighting the versatility of the fiber stitch. Yeah, I think one of the really nice things that you know kind of goes unnoticed here is the fact that you're doing all this with a nanoscope as well. So you're able to do this in a very minimally invasive way and utilize smaller probes, smaller arthroscopy equipment, and still get a very excellent repair here. So this is really nice. So I've got an interesting case that kind of piggybacks off of what you just said, kind of utilizing a hybrid technique. So this is a 17-year-old soccer player, and this, this young guy actually had a discoid meniscus tear on the contralateral side and had somewhat of a Wantanabe variant where he really did not have excellent meniscal capsular attachments and actually was bucketing his discoid meniscus on the other side. Did very well with the other side after a repair, but came back with the exact same thing on the contralateral side with an MRI showing a bucketed discoid lateral meniscus. And so in this instance, it was a very complex tear with degeneration in the substance of the meniscus, instability, and obviously bucketing. And so in this situation, we actually used 12 degree fiber stitch implants up top, 24 degree implants inferior, and then actually a straight to sort of perform a circumferential horizontal mattress reinforcement suture. So what we're gonna see in this video is the instability of the meniscus. We've already completed our saucerization, so we've got that discoid meniscus. And what we're starting to do here is place our standard sutures on top in our vertical mattress configuration to compress the superior aspect of the meniscus against the capsule. And you'll see that that's bringing the meniscus back but you can see some degeneration of the meniscus. It's not a perfectly normal meniscus given the discoid pattern. Um, and we're starting to place some differential sutures. Here I'm actually gonna place a uh, 24 degree curve implant on the undersurface of the tear to stabilize the meniscus, uh, to bring that meniscus back down to the tibial plateau. And again, you can see there's a lot of degeneration in this meniscus. It's not a perfectly normal meniscus tear. And so what I'm going to do to stabilize this further is place a horizontal mattress suture here, again, from the ipsilateral portal, being very careful to understand the depth, having looked at the preoperative MRI as to how deep we can go and where the, um, important structures are. And then in the end, I'm actually gonna place a circumferential suture just lateral of the popliteus, which you can see over on the periphery there to really complete our meniscus repair. Yeah, that's great. Those discoids are tough and you really have to be aware of that intra-substance degeneration and that peripheral instability. And if you're gonna have a chance of success, you've got to address all those issues. So yeah, the fiber stitch is really a good tool for that. I think this last case in particular demonstrates one of the techniques that I frequently use, which is utilizing the flexibility of the skid of that meniscal repair device, where you can actually utilize that to sort of mimic the degree of curvature of the devices and kind of template or plan which device might work best in these complex situations. With all these different curves that are available with the fiber stitch device, we can really navigate each tear in each unique patient successfully to treat any of these different tear types. Yeah, thanks a lot, Lee. I really appreciate it and really enjoyed hearing everything.